Hey guys, Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today we are continuing on with our Back to Basics tutorial. We're going all the way from step two to step number nine in the Cheat Engine tutorial. This time we're doing the 64-bit version. Uh, like I say, uh, this is for the uh, for new people that are wanting to really learn how to game hack, how to uh, do a lot better. A lot of times you come to these channels like mine or Steven's and you kind of, you, you see the newest vids coming out, but you don't realize that we have built on from previous vids and things like that. And we're not going to go over stuff we've already covered and you're just like completely lost. I mean, you pick up bits and pieces here and there, but it's still confusing you. Well, that's because you don't have the core basics down. And um, once you get these core basics down that we're, we are covering here, now, I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you in these things, and I'm sorry about that, but believe me, uh, I wish somebody would have threw it at me like this because it would have saved me a lot of reading, it would have saved me a lot of time, and a lot of guessing. And, uh, and that's why I was happy to find Stephen Chapman's channel when I did because, I mean, I finally found a guy that was willing to teach in layman's terms and not throw all these NASA technical terms at me that they knew I didn't understand and he just walked it step by step starting from beginner easy stuff and then he gradually went up into intermediate then gradually went up into more advanced things and and I'm telling you what it just it, that helped me out tremendously but uh, what we need to do is get you to understand the very core basics what these registries are doing, how these scripts interact with your computer and cheat engine, and how you can really improve your game hacking ability, other than just finding values and changing the value and that's it. You can create trainers, you can do all kinds of things. So that's where we are right now and we're gonna pick up where we left off with step number five. So let me go ahead and save what I got and I will be right back with you. Okay, so now we are going to continue on. I'm sorry, I had to bring everything back up again. So remember, we've already done step two, three, and four. So I'm sure everybody's good on that. Just to retrace or backtrack just a little bit. Basically, all this tutorial is doing is getting you familiar with Cheat Engine. And also, the first three lessons, I, I really kind of threw you guys into the deep end. I, I took you way beyond of what was actually the point of step two, three, and four. So I'm sorry about that, uh, you know, but I really wanted to get that information to you and start drilling it then and there because it's very important stuff and it'll help you out here. The rest of these steps we can kind of coast through because you know more of what's going on and everything. But basically what the first uh, three steps were designed to do, step two, three, and four, it was to get you uh, used to working with different value types where we have four byte float, double, things like that. And basically it was just teaching you basic search methods of finding these things using the scan function. But basically all it really wanted you to do was just locate the address and change it, <coughs> excuse me, change it to what it told you to, like a thousand or five thousand or whatever. And you could have done, just done that with the regular address. But like I say, I really threw you into the deep end. I'm really, you know, trying to get you to learn how to swim here. And I, I just really jumped ahead and just started throwing a bunch of information at you about what's really going on. A lot of you already know what's going on, but you newer people you kind of have an idea of what's going on, but hopefully I was trying to answer questions that I've been getting from a lot of new people and we've just been going over it. So I just started showing you right off the bat how to, you know, use scripts to your advantage, how to open up and broaden your horizons other than just locating addresses and that's it. But basically what Cheat Engine is doing here or the tutorial is doing here, now it's getting ready to put you into a little bit deeper waters here and teach you how to have something where you can always change the value or find the address without having to keep scanning for it all the time. It's setting you up to be able to write scripts, which we've already dove into, basically. All right. So really all it wants you to do here is, is teaching you how to use the code finder function, which is also the debugger in Cheat Engine which you should already know by now. If, you, if you're here at this lesson, you should know that. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and do a new scan. We're going to change the value. 
And really what it's saying here is that these sometimes these addresses change. Well, all, just about in every game, unless it's a static address, these addresses are going to change right here every single time. So it's getting you used to using the debugger so you don't have to do the scan but one time. And that's the first time. And then once you hack it, write a script, you ain't never got to find it again as long as you don't update your uh, game version or anything like that. And we know this one is it right here, so we're just going to stop that we can change it just to make sure and there it is 664 and we put the debugger on it by right clicking on it and we're going to find out what accesses this address now i always use what accesses this address now sometimes you get in these 64-bit games there's just tons and tons and tons of opcodes reading from it writing to it you'll find that a lot with your coordinates and things like that and sometimes you just need what's writing to it but you know, for smaller type things, I want to see everything that's going on with it. All right, I just want to see everything that's going on with the address, and I can do that by putting on what accesses the address. What is accessing it is showing what's reading and writing to it. Okay. <coughs> All righty. So let's change the value. We can see nothing is constantly accessing it right now. So basically, what it wants you to do, it wants you to freeze the value. Every time you mash the change button, it wants you just to, where it doesn't change the value anymore. It wants you to do that in new mem. So when we click on change the value, it just changes it to some random value, 911 it is now. And we can see everything that's going on with it when the value is changed. Now remember, we can always tell what's reading and what's writing. Basically, what's we just go by our basic principle remember this there's always an instruction of what's happening it looks like we want something moved into a registry or an address remember what's on the left side of the comma is always what's being affected and what's on the right side of the comma is what is affecting it so what is affecting it is always on the right hand side and what's being affected is on the left hand side and how it's being affected is based on the command right here it's a move which is like place this value into this registry whatever the value is in here now change it to this value basically all that is is copy and replace copy and replace that's what it's doing okay so we can see here that the only thing that's affecting our address and our address will be the one that's in the brackets is rax now we got a unique situation here well it's not really unique but you know based on our past lessons in here we see that there's no offset it's just a base address is our actual address remember i told you a base address is the starting point and an offset is the distance away from that base starting point it can be either plus or minus however in this particular case the starting point is the address we want to manipulate so i want to throw this out there to you that when you see no offsets being used and it's just a base registry and it's like your health or something like that you really want to be careful you really want to be careful with that because usually when you see that that's usually a big shared opcode and you'll find that a lot in these flash games and stuff like that where it just everything is going through one opcode and we're going to cover this later that's a step nine uh, actual lesson right there it teaches you how we use compares to compare your address out but there, and there are other ways you can do that too, but we're not talking about that right now. But for right now, you want to be careful because a lot of addresses could be going through something like that. That's why there really is no start point, because just multiple addresses from all over different functions and structures are all going down that one funnel. And sometimes that happens, okay? And we just got to think other ways around it, but... For this lesson here, we don't need to worry about it because when we show in the dissembler, it takes us to that opcode, and we want to see all the addresses that are going through that opcode. We just right-click it, find out what addresses this instruction access. It's also known as a breakpoint on access. So if you hear that term, it's the same thing. And let's just leave it on value type 4 byte and change the value and we see no other addresses are being used right now by that opcode just the address we're wanting to manipulate so basically all this lesson is doing is telling you that these addresses are going to change but you don't have to keep searching for it every time to get what you want done
and basically what it wants you to do is knock out the address to where you change this value it's just going to stay at 828 it's not going to change it anymore that's all it's doing and it wants you to do that right here uh, replace and but what that does is that puts knots on these two bytes right here but we're going to write a script that way we can bring it back up and it's always going to do that so let's go ahead and do that and we're going to do another AOB injection and we're just going to call that step 5 now remember this is naming the byte the address that very start address and I really need you to go see lesson number 2 if you haven't already because I'm not covering that again that this byte is this address this 10 is a different address those that saw the second lesson understand this now understand and here's a good thing I want to show you because basically in the past two lessons we've been dealing with an opcode that's you know really long you know the opcode has all these bytes in it which is nothing but the opcode in byte form that the computer is reading and so we know that we need five bytes one two three four five and any excess bytes left over it's going to knock out and that'll be where we place our jump however the opcode here that we want to place our jump on the jump to allocated memory only has two bytes we need five bytes so what we're going to do well what cheat engine does automatically is borrows bytes from the next opcode down to equal five bytes and any excess bytes there will be not okay so let's take a look <clears throat> let's count it so now we know that there's going to be two opcodes going to be affecting this script okay because we need to borrow some bytes from this opcode so what it's going to do it's going to count the bytes one two three four five we need those five bytes one for the jump and four bytes for the four byte address we're going to be jumping to and we see there's going to be one access byte left over but what it has to do this opcode this is not an opcode we're modifying but it still needs to run so guess what that's why it puts it in the script because it's going to place that in allocated memory also because that that opcode still needs to do its function okay it's just going to do it in another place so let's assign that to the current cheat table right now just so i can show you okay so now we have two opcodes in our script oh, i'm sorry these two these two opcodes in our script do you understand why there's two opcodes in there now? Because we, in the main program, we had to borrow these bytes for our jump to allocate a memory. So it cannot run this opcode there now. Where in the past, we had a long opcode, which we had plenty of bytes to put a jump and some access over. So we only needed that one opcode in our script. Okay? So that's why you see that sometimes and sometimes you don't. So let's take a look at the script one more time and it places both opcodes and then we can do our manipulations. We're not changing this at all. That still needs to run. It's just running in a different area. All right, and you can see here, it needed five bytes for the jump and there was one byte left over. So it knocked it out in the main program, which knocking out the bytes, just to reiterate, states that those bytes still exist. We still need them, but we're just not using them right now. So don't get rid of them. All right, so when we place, we turn on our cheat, we hadn't really modified anything. So when the game gets here, it sees, okay, I don't need to run anything here. All I need to do is jump to this allocated memory address. And it jumps here, and then it runs it, and then it jumps back. Now, before we jump back, I want to show you this. Also, because I didn't really explain it, so I'm going to explain it now. This return right here. And I need to correct myself also, that's why I'm doing this. <clears throat> I need to correct myself on the past vid because I, I said that incorrectly. When we placed another label in new mem, I need to correct myself on that. You don't want it above the return, you want it above the address. You see this step five here that we named in our AOB scan module? Well, that's defining that very first byte of the array of bytes that we've already talked about. If you watch those two vids you already understand this that's all I'm going to say about it so we know that's named this which is actually in the in the main program let's go back it's actually that up here in the main program you can see it it even names it step 5 you see that names that address step 5 
and that's in the main program. So when we tell it right underneath that address, return, guess what we're talking about? We're talking about the byte after our injection points. That's why we placed it underneath the address. So anything above this address will be part of new mem. Anything below new mem address and above this one will be part of new mem in our allocated memory. We can put as many labels as we want depending on how many bytes we have allocated, which we have tons. But right now, this is already defined. So this is not part of new mem. It's not part of that allocated memory. So when we tell the computer jump to return, it's not jumping anywhere in allocated memory. It's jumping directly back to the next opcode that's not part of the injection, which is this byte right here, which is the next runnable opcode on down and just keeps going on with what it needs to do. Does that make sense to you? So that's why, and the reason I say that, because last time I told you it's okay as long as we put the label anywhere between return and new mem, that's not correct. We need to place our label if we're like putting our double value like we did last time, like if I was putting, I need to store it somewhere where it's not interfering with code instruction, I'll just put my double or something like that, just name it whatever we want. We need to place it above that already predefined address and below new mem. That will make it part of new mem, not just above return, but above this. Okay, so I correct myself on that. I'm sorry, it was a slip up, but hopefully you understand that, and I'm sure most of you do. A lot of smart people come here, and if you stick around this long, then that tells me right there you got some intelligence. All right. So basically, what it wants us to do is knock out that okay we've done it so many different ways and there's other ways you can do the exact same thing so this time we're not going to do a direct byte manipulation we're going to knock it out in our allocated memory so let's go back to our allocated memory so it jumps down here to allocated memory to run our cheat but we're going to knock out that instruction so what we're going to do is this right here and it's good i'm showing you this and when you put two slash marks in front of it, that voids it out. It's still there. We can see it, but the computer won't recognize it. Okay? The cheat engine won't recognize it. It will not be there anymore. The only thing that will be there is this okay that needs to run. So we mash okay. Oops, I'm sorry. Let me get rid of my double walk around about that. Alright. So let's mash okay and take a look. We still have it turned on. And it's still there, so we need to turn it back off, then back on again. And sometimes it allocates it in the same spot, sometimes it don't. But as you can see now, it's totally gone. It's like it doesn't even exist. That's what a knock basically does. A knock keeps the bytes in there, but in allocated memory, we don't need them to exist. We just need them to exist up here in the main program, right here. All right, that way we can turn the code back off and it places those bytes back to what they originally were. So when we jump to new mem, which is down here, this is new mem, this byte right here is new mem, and all this down here is performing what we told it to do. We said void out that opcode completely. We don't want anything writing to our address. Void it out. So it's no longer there. So when the game gets to it or the tutorial program gets to it, it doesn't see that outcode. All it sees is this one, and that's the only thing it's going to run. The next thing it sees is jump to return. We see our return right here, but it's underneath our address. So it automatically puts that address it's supposed to return to, 25606, which, as you can see, is that byte right there, 48. Okay? So I hope that made sense. You know, I know that's a lot of information. That's why I just kind of wanted to show you what's really going on in these scripts. You see all these things, but you don't know, understand why it's there. It's important that you know why things go in specific places. It does matter where you put these things, okay? Make sure it's a below new mem if you're wanting to use new mem bytes. If it's above new mem, you're going to have to allocate new memory or whatever you put above new mem. It needs its own space. There is nothing above new mem. 
Because if you put it above new mem, it's going to come down here and just see there's nothing there. You're going to get errors. Okay? So if you need it, you're going to have to allocate new space for anything that you put above new mem. So, and anything below return, you're going to have to allocate space for. It. Okay? If you just start hooking things to this, it may hook it to the main program. Not sure exactly how that works if it's not pre allocated. So, just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and run it. And basically, when we when we turn that on, which we have on, that opcode is no longer there, so it will not be changing the value, and our next button should appear. Boom, there it is. So now we have a workable script that will work each and every time. Let's go ahead and put that on there, bypass step five. Each and every time we bring it up, and I'll show you. Let's rehook it back to the game or the tutorial. Let's get, put that down here. Now we can turn on all five of these. Next, hook, next button appears. Next button appears. And I went and redid this to where just the next button appears instead of having that go to 5,000. I'm sorry, I did that off camera. And now we're down to here. We just need to change the value. Boom, next button appears. And boom, we're on step number six. I was going to go ahead into step number six, but I think I'm going to go ahead and keep that for the next lesson because step six and step seven are basically the same type of lesson. This is just getting you introduced to pointers, and then uh, step seven is doing a multi level pointer. So I'll save that for the next lesson because there's some things I want to discuss about that. So I'm going to end this one here uh, for the tutorial portion. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming here and supporting Cheat the Game. I cannot begin to tell you how much that means to me. Your comments and everything mean the world to me. You placing a like on it and letting me know that you're getting something out of this, that you appreciate it, that means the world to me here also. And the way you guys go over to the uh, Facebook channel, Discord, and the uh, website um, and help other people, I mean, that is just tops. I mean, you guys are truly the greatest, and I think each and every one of you, and I cannot tell you how much that means to me and all of us over at CTG. So thank you all so much. I do want to thank my partners and donators, which are considered partners also. Uh, these guys help cheat the game, keep going, and uh, we would love to see you part of that. They have uh, access to exclusive content that's only available to them. They get uh, a lot of free games. I give them free software. I give them all kind of things, and we just it's just a surprise every month, and uh, we're going to be doing giveaways, but uh, partners get the choice of it first. It only costs a dollar a month. If you would like to come join us over at the Patreon page, I'll leave the links for it down in the description. And I will allow you access to the exclusive content. And just come and join us. Uh, we'd love to have you. Also, come join our Facebook, Discord, or website channels. Those links are in the description as well. So thank you all so much for everything you do for me. I really, really appreciate it. I could not do this without any of you. Just coming here and watching the vid, placing a like on it, and you're doing your part too, and that that just makes you an honorary member of Cheat the Game right there. So thank you for that also. All right, guys, I'm out of here. You all take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, it does not mind cheating you. You all take care now.